a sad update to share with you. Brooklyn Park Police have confirmed a three-year-old boy who has been fighting for his life since being found in a golf course pond a month ago has died. Police say the three-year-old died Sunday night. Police got a call the morning of September 25th that the boy who was on the autism spectrum had wandered away. Police found the child in a pond at the Edinburgh USA golf course. Saturday is drug take back day and for the first time drop off sites are accepting vaping devices. The Golden Valley Police Department is one of the agencies participating in the program. This time around vaping devices and cartridges will be accepted for disposal along with unwanted medicines. The move comes after several deaths and illnesses linked with the electronic vaping of nicotine, THC and CBD products. Certainly with all the stuff going on, um, we want to help do our part. If people think that that is a product or an item they don't want to have to deal with, we'll be happy to dispose of that for them. One of the local drug take back boxes is in the lobby of the Golden Valley Police Department. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. A recent outbreak of illnesses and deaths associated with the use of e-cigarettes has federal health officials urging people to refrain from using all vaping products as they investigate the cause. Many of those illnesses have been linked to illicit vaping products containing THC. As Delane Cleveland reports, the warnings have cut into the bottom line of local vaping retailers. For the past six years, the e-cig market on the western edge of Brooklyn Park has been a go-to spot for anyone looking to stock up on vaping products. We've been here just helping people quit smoking cigarettes. That's all we really do. Everybody here is really passionate about just helping people, you know, kick that bend. Tristan Parker manages the store, with the selling point being that vaping is a better tasting and less harmful alternative to cigarettes. You can ask most cigarette smokers and they'll tell you the cigarettes that they smoke do not taste pleasant at all. While federal officials have and officially approved e-cigarettes as an aid to quit regular cigarettes. The CDC says vaping is less harmful than smoking regular cigarettes because the aerosol generally contains fewer toxic chemicals than cigarette smoke. As a result, sales have steadily increased throughout the years. That is, until recently. It's a lot of people are, are scared of these headlines and stuff like that. Headlines such as this one from the CDC talking about the outbreak of lung-related injuries associated with vaping. As of mid-October, there's been nearly 1,500 injuries and 33 deaths nationwide. However, most of those cases were linked to illicit products containing THC. We don't sell any, any THC products whatsoever. It's all underground and black market items that these people are buying and getting. Yet the CDC is still asking people to refrain from use of all e-cigarette products as they work to determine the exact cause of the illnesses. The news has meant a reversal of fortune for many e-cigarette shops as people go back to old habits. The FDA and the government implementing these things is actually causing more people to smoke cigarettes again. Parker says the thought of hiring any new staff has been put on the back burner for now. Yet as the investigation into the effects of vaping continues, he remains optimistic. You know, we're doing what we can. We're kicking in there. The numbers do look like they're going up slowly. In Brooklyn Park, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. According to the American Vaping Association, about 200 e-cigarette stores nationwide have closed since August 1st. Golden Valley is working on being a more inclusive city. As we told you last January, part of that process was forming the Rising Tides Task Force. The task force has met over the last year, and Wednesday they gave an update to the public on what they've been doing. Some of their initiatives include finding ways to increase diversity on boards and city council, working to eliminate bias in city contracts, and working on approaches to talk about equity with the community. The group's chair thinks the city is setting an example by forming the task force. They have taken um, some really bold initial first steps in becoming a city that is um, putting their money where their mouth is in terms of inclusion. And we are really shepherding the process of getting community engagement and making sure that all voices are heard in this process. The next meeting is November 12th at City Hall and the public is welcome to attend. Osseo Senior High School students are getting a glimpse of what life after high school may feel like. In today's School Spotlight, Papua Yang shows us how a new learning space is helping students get ahead. Right now, what is AP Gov 
Because you have AP Gov and AP English. Behind these glass doors. Right, and have you done the survey? Is no standard classroom setting. The book was just too much for me. With its mobile seating and interactive environment. That's good. The flex learning space is reserved for students taking online courses. They are able to come into that classroom and have flexibility of what they're working on. Unlike a typical study hall. Like here, yeah. because you guys tend to... Students have the option to use that time to meet with online teachers. Are you able to do these things whenever you want? A coach like Ben Carls will also be on hand if help is needed. So I'll work with the teachers and say, I'm hearing this from the kids. They need you know a little bit more structure here. These instructions aren't as clear. And then the teachers will communicate to the scholars. So like 2.50-ish, I start working on homework. High school senior Auntie Johnson says the flexible workspace is helping her in many ways. Um, time management, it's helping me a lot because I'm like managing my time more wisely. If I, I rather understand something. Than the room also allows for conversations and collaboration with other students. We all take the same class so we're able to communicate with each other like, hey, I don't understand this, do you understand it and can I, can you help me or can I help you? Carls says the new workspace along with online courses relate to today's workforce. Because it's no longer a world where you go directly to your site. Oftentimes you can be working from home, you can be working with colleagues from another country, another state. Yeah, because that was a big issue last time. He says this 21st century model oh, will prepare degree. students the wording of the test. for college and beyond. In Chem. In Osseo, Pafu Yang, CCX News. The workspace is also available for students taking college level courses. The Maple Grove boys soccer team qualified for the state tournament for the seventh time in program history. The Crimson were matched against the top seeded team in the Class AA tournament. The Crimson and Edina meeting at St. Cloud State. Maple Grove gets one great chance in the first half. This header by Handy Hicks though off the goal post. This game scoreless at halftime. Edina strikes on a very long free kick. It takes a high bounce. An all-metro pick, Will Swan to heads it in as the Hornets break the deadlock with about 25 minutes to go in the match. Nine minutes later, off another free kick. The ball hits traffic in front, and Valentin Coraleo is there to bury the rebound. The Hornets take a 2 to nothing lead. And they tack on two more goals from there. Henry Rose gets up for the header as they score off a free kick once more. All four of Edina's goals come in the final 26 minutes as they eliminate the Crimson four to nothing. Spots in the state cross country meet are on the line this week at section competitions. Runners in section 6AA towed the line Wednesday. Dry and not too windy day at Gale Woods. White Zetter freshman Abby Nekanicki follows up her late conference title by winning the section title with a time of 18 minutes, 0.5 seconds. Hopkins seventh grader Sydney Drevlo is the runner up in a time of 18.23. Grace Weber, another Trojans freshman, takes seventh place as White Zetta is second as a team to qualify for state. Persevering through a season plagued by injury and illness. And the boys are up next. And as White Zetta senior. Shawai Hussein winning the race in a time of 15 minutes, 53.3 seconds. Hopkins' Leo Goodman is sixth. His teammate Ben Haberman takes eighth. They both will run at state, but no local boys teams qualified. We talked to Wyzetta Hussein and Weber about the upcoming state meet. We're bringing a lot of younger runners in that are really stepping up. And I think it's made us stronger as a team when all this has happened. I've been wanting to go to state, the state championships ever since I joined the team back in eighth grade. And uh, yeah, it's a big accomplishment for me. We'll have highlights from the Section 5AA meet starting Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock on CCX Sports. Football teams in Class 6A kick off the playoffs Friday night. And only one of the 31 teams who compete in 6A is still undefeated. The Wysetta football team comes into the postseason unbeaten for the first time since 2011. It's a pretty good feeling. Good, I'm happy for our kids in the regular season and finding a way to win the district in a really, really good football district. Um, you know, and now we kind of know that that is, uh, that's great and we're happy that we accomplished it, but also we know we've got to move on to the next things and that now that uh, you know, we're in the postseason, uh, that doesn't really matter anymore. It helps for seeding, but now, now we've got to go and, and find ways to prepare and play. It's really cool, especially senior year. Um, you know, to be 8 no, but we hope that, you know, we, we keep going and keep rolling with it. So we all know the expectations. 
The Trojans have combined a very good offense with solid defense and special teams to get to this point, and have done so against some tough opponents. The players say they are a close group on and off the field, and that matters. I can't even tell you how close we are. Definitely closer than the other years um, I've played with, but this group of seniors, we, um, we connect like that. The bond we have with each other is, is really kind of the main reason why we're so, um, I guess, such a special football team. But um, and at the end of the day, it really just comes down to our, you know, everybody doing their 111th and you know, doing their job. Wyzetta will be heavy favorites this week against winless Egan. Victory gets the Trojans another home game next Friday night. It's great for our kids, it's great for our community, um, you know, getting our student body here and, and everything just feels a little bit better when you're at home and, and uh, so we're looking forward to that, we're really happy we got some, it's got some home games and a, and a great chance for our seniors to continue to play here. This team has the talent to go far in the playoffs and the Trojans would love to bring some hardware home in late November. But we want to finish the job, we want to come back with a banner right on there, right next to all the other ones. The Trojans and Egan kick off at 7 o'clock Friday night. That's all for sports. More news in a moment.